What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg with the brand new OnePlus 6. This is an all new design replacing the 5T from last year and gives us a nearly full edge to edge display while preserving the same footprint of the 5T it's replacing. We also get a new all glass design which looks especially impressive in this new mirror black finish. And as always, OnePlus really delivers on the specs. We get a Snapdragon 845 and up to eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of onboard storage. Now OnePlus sent this to me in a reviewer kit. So you won't get this when you buy yours just to make that clear. But of course you will get the phone which comes in this white box. Now all of these cases are available on the OnePlus store and some of my favorites include the sandstone case. Getting to the OnePlus 6 box is pretty familiar for OnePlus. We do get some new branding here which highlights the performance of the OnePlus 6 which is really impressive. So lifting up the lid, the first thing we get is the phone in its cradle. So if we pick this up, it comes with the cradle. So let's go ahead and set that aside for a quick moment and take a look at the accessories. So one of those accessories includes the dash charger, which runs at only five volts, but four amps. So it maximizes current over voltage. So this means you can continue charging your phone without thermal throttling, which tends to be an issue with most rapid charging solutions. So inside this tray, in addition to a SIM ejection tool and some paperwork is an included TP style case. So this is just enough to provide protection for the phone, but you may want to get something a little more upscale from the OnePlus store. Now the design of the OnePlus 6 really won't break any new ground here. It's still a really good looking phone. It's covered in Corning Gorilla Glass 5, both on the front and the back. And the glass is sort of rounded off at the edges to meet the frame. And all of it has a nice smooth continuous feel. So it feels like a very high end phone. Now somewhat disappointing here is the lack of wireless charging, especially with an all glass design. So just below the dual LED flash, we have our fingerprint sensor in addition to the face unlock feature. It's placed just right, has the right amount of texture so you can feel for it, and it's extremely fast and reliable. They have tweaked the button placement for the OnePlus 6. So along the right side, in addition to the sleep wake power button, we'll also find the three position alert slider. This allows you to toggle between different silencing profiles. That used to be on the left side. So on the left side, we still have the volume rocker. And just above that is the dual SIM tray. At the top, the only thing we'll find is a microphone, but down below we'll find the USB-C connector, a headphone jack, and a single loudspeaker along with another microphone. So unfortunately, no stereo speakers in this case, but with Dirac HD sound, quality is actually pretty impressive. So the headphone jack is great news for a lot of people, but if you want to go wireless, OnePlus has a new set of wireless headphones called the Bullets, which I'll be reviewing in a separate video, so make sure you stay tuned for that. So the display on the OnePlus 6 is 6.28 inches with an unusual aspect ratio of 19 by nine. So this is an extra tall display. We get a resolution of 2280 by 1080, so that's good for 402 pixels per inch. Not only is it a sharp display, but it's extremely bright. So this is fantastic for outdoor visibility. But of course, like a lot of extra tall displays today, we have a notch to make room for the camera module at the top. Now this notch is pretty small compared to something like the iPhone 10, but if you want to minimize the notch, there is a software setting that allows you to black out the space on either side. I think this is a nice solution. We also get an updated set of dual cameras on the back. One's 20 megapixels and the main camera is 16 megapixels, which also gets optical image stabilization. Both of them have the same f1.7 aperture, which gives us the same focal length. So it looks like they sort of work together for both zooming as well as depth perception for portrait effects. But this sensor is 19% larger, which means we have larger pixels for better low light sensitivity. This camera also comes with a bunch of flagship features such as 480 frames per second super slow motion or 4K video recording at 60 frames per second. The front camera also belongs to another flagship smartphones. We have a 16 megapixel sensor with an f2.0 aperture. So we get 1080p video recording at 30 frames per second and electronic image stabilization. Also shortly after launch, we get a portrait mode for the front facing camera, which I can't demonstrate just yet. They certainly did not skimp on the specs for this phone. It's powered by a Snapdragon 845, which is an octa-core 10 nanometer chip running at 2.8 gigahertz. That's paired with the Adreno 630 GPU. But when it comes to RAM, we get six or eight gigs of LPDDR4X RAM. So eight gigs is the most RAM I've ever reviewed in a smartphone and that gives you a lot of room to suspend apps. In terms of storage, we get 64, 120 gigs or 256 gigs of UFS 2.1 two lane storage. So it's fast and reliable. And because this is such a large phone, we also get a large battery, 3300 milliamp hours, which is right up there with the Galaxy Note 8. So checking out this interface, if we double tap the lock screen to wake it up, you can see just how quickly face unlock works on this. Now, in order to show you this, I'll actually have to tilt the phone away from me so we can double tap to wake it up. Tilt it toward me, 
unlocks right away. It's extremely fast. It's one of the best systems I've used. Now, in terms of the OS, this is Android 8.1 right now, and it's powered by the latest version of Oxygen OS, which does gain some new features. One of them is a new gesture-based interface. So if I swipe up from the bottom, this takes me home. If I swipe up and hold, this takes me to the recent apps view, which is the Android 8.1 version of it. And if I swipe up on the left hand or right hand side, this will take me back. So it basically replaces the entire navigation bar. Now this may not be on by default. And if you want to turn this on or turn it off, just go to settings. And if you go to the button setting panel right here, you have the option to go to the navigation bar and gestures. And the feature I have turned on is called navigation gestures. So if you just want to go back to the fixed navigation bar, you can enable that. Or if you want the navigation bar, but you want it to hide when it's not being used, you can also select that. So it's still quite a bit different than Android P, but some similar ideas are here. Gestures has always been a big part of the OnePlus interface. In fact, if we go to settings, you'll find an entire section dedicated just to the gestures that are available. So we have a long press to take a photograph. So if you're within the camera app, if you long press the fingerprint sensor, this allows you to quickly take a photograph. This actually works best if you have the front facing camera on. So let's go ahead and try that. There you go. We also have flip to mute, so if you have an incoming call or alarms going off, all you have to do is flip the phone face down. You have the three finger screenshot, so if you swipe down, this takes a quick screen grab, and then you can also continue grabbing a shot if it scrolls down a bit farther. We also have these other predefined lock screen gestures, such as drawing an O, V, S, M, or W, and you can assign actions for those. So again, if you wanna open up the camera, go to the lock screen, Draw zero, launches directly into the camera app. The interface is otherwise pretty familiar for OnePlus, so you swipe to the right to get to the shelf, which is a feature you can turn on and off, but basically this is a place for all of your widgets to live. So you can add new ones from the widget panel, or you can see quick access to your recent apps, recent contacts, you can even write a memo or check your dashboard for your device health, such as your battery status. Now if you tap and hold to get to our home screen editor, of course you can go to your widgets, wallpapers, and more, but what I wanna take a look at here is home screen settings. So this is where you can turn off the shelf if you don't want that feature. Swipe down allows you to quickly swipe down anywhere on the screen to get to your quick settings. So if I have this turned on, right now you can see it allows me to quickly access the, those quick settings without having to swipe down from the top. We also have some of our notification settings. So under notification dots, not only can you turn off those notification dots by the apps, but you can also change the notification settings for your lock screen. You can also change the icon pack. So you can go with the OnePlus icon pack, round, square, or you can get one from the Play Store. In terms of home screen layout, this allows you to adjust the grid. So we basically have three, four, or five columns. So five columns appears to be on by default. You can also change the icon size to large, small, or middle. So digging into the settings panel, one of the things I want to take a look at here is buttons. So under buttons, we have our navigation bar and gesture. So again, I took a look at this earlier, but this allows you to turn on the navigation gestures feature, hide the navigation bar when it's not being used. Uh, now, in order to see all of these features here, you have to have the buttons turned on. So that's what I've done right here. So we have long press actions and double tap actions, and you can assign different actions for those. So each button has its own assignable action, which is kind of nice. You can also swap the button. So if you want the back button, and the recent apps button swapped, you can do that. You can also double press the power button for the camera, which I always find useful. We can also customize the status bar. So we have our icon manager. So you can turn off certain icons that appear up here. So for example, if you want to turn off the Wi-Fi indicator or the cellular data indicator, this really cleans things up up there. Under display, in addition to night mode and reading mode, we also have our screen calibration. So we have sRGB, DCI-P3, adaptive mode, and we can customize the color. So we can go for warmer or cooler. Now to manage the notch display, you have two settings. You can show the notch area, which is on by default. So that's integrated into all aspects of the OS, but if you hide the notch area, basically that's just used for the status bar icons and it's blacked out. So that kind of squares off the screen if you don't like it. Now because this is a pre-release device, I can't give it my full review treatment, so I can't talk about the camera quality just yet or battery performance or how the display compares to other smartphones. So make sure you stay tuned to my full review. If you guys enjoyed this early hands-on, please let me know with a like and I'll see you again in my next video.